Hello, welcome to Bright Road to Success, where we make learning easy. Thank you for joining us today on the channel. It's a very, very special day. Now, if you've joined me here before, you know that we provide reading lessons to students anywhere from kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade. Today is a very, very special day because I am going to read my very own book. Yes, the book that I wrote. This book was born out of necessity. So I teach third grade and I noticed that, and this is over the years, I've been teaching for about 20 years now, and I've noticed over the years that many students just don't know how to appropriately use the capital letter I. So I decided to write this whimsical story about these colorful letters that live in this place called the Alpha House, and they slowly learn how to correctly use the capital letter I. So thank you for joining me. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the bell and the like, and uh, hopefully I will see you again soon. So stay tuned for our story. A Grammatical Adventure. Where's capital letter I? Written by Orchid Hill, illustrated by Courtney Huddleston. On 1745 Ferndale Drive, there once stood a purple house full of letters. Each night, twinkling stars shone brightly on the rainbow-colored letters frolicking around the Alpha House. One particular day, Mr. Grammar was taking his fluffy dog Spices for their typical evening stroll. Out of nowhere, the letters A, B, and C burst through the front door, tripping over each other as they raced into the yard, playing catch with a big red bouncy ball. With eyes wide open and a frown, Mr. Grammar mumbled, Am I seeing things? Soon the letters D, E, F, and G joined the fun. Na, 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 you can catch me, teased the letter E. The letter E was especially loud, which made no sense considering she had ginormous ears. Although the letter sparked Mr. Grammar's curiosity, he continued to stroll down the empty street pretending to be unfazed. Suddenly, he turned around and tiptoed back to the Alpha House, hiding behind the big oak tree standing in the front yard. Slowly, he crept past the yellow, big yellow school bus and ventured into the backyard. Yippee! yelled the letter P as he hung upside down by his tail on the monkey bars. Swish! Splash! The letters H, J, and K pounced on each other in the swimming pool, while L, M, and O jumped rope like Olympians. Frowning, Mr. Grammar wandered around hiding from the letters. He wondered if he was having a dream. Even Spices seemed confused as she noticed a sign that read, Inchworm Crossing. Mr. Grammar thought to himself, uh, something isn't right. Suddenly, Spices began jumping up and down, pulling Mr. Grammar towards QRS. Roof, 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 barked Spices. Pull, Q, pull, hollered S. Mr. Grammar noticed Q and R tugging on opposite ends of the rope, while the letter S screamed orders at them both. Uh-oh, Mr. Grammar pondered. I think they know I'm watching them. Hey, Mr. Grammar, yelled the letters QRS in unison. Come over here and play pin the sentence on Patty Pearl paper with us. Uh, okay, I'll play, stammered Mr. Grammar. All the letters huddled around Patty Pearl paper, who was busy prancing around in her high heel purple shoes, a giant pink bow, and a long strand of pearls. Okay, who wants to go first, yelled letter O. That would be me, announced the terrific letter T. So T took a deep breath, moved a bunch of letters around, and began creating words. Then the opulent letter O hollered, Okay, one, two, three, go! Patty Pearl Paper took off running like a cheetah. The letter T began to race like the wind toward Patty. The other letters, and Mr. Grammar, dashed behind the letter T, cheering in anticipation of the cool sentence she would construct. Patty zigzagged around the yard, but she was no match for the letter T. Bam! The letter T threw the sentence on Patty, which read, Please let my sister and I come to your house for a sleepover. Nope, you're wrong, cried the wise letter W. Everybody knew that W was the smartest of them all. 
They had all wondered how he managed to keep his glasses on, even though he had no ears. Hey, let me try, exclaimed the letter X. Okay, letter X, if you think you've got what it takes, go for it, teased the sassy letter S. Slowly, X began to make words with the letters. The letter O yelled out, one, two, three, go! Again, Patty Pearl Paper took off running and soon after, the letter X was on her heels. Unfortunately, the letter X tripped over a box of crayons and squished poor little red and blue, but still managed to throw the words on Miss Patty. Bam! This time the sentence read, Do you know what I'm going to bring to the party? Ha ha ha! You're making me crazy, laughed the letter A. I guess X did not mark the spot, teased the letter O. But wait, let me try again, begged the letter X. Nope, no way, uh-uh, no do-overs, exclaimed the letter O, clearly enjoying bossing people around. The letter X dropped his head and mumbled, I guess that's why people use me to mark incorrect answers. Okay, who's up next, called out the letter S. Suddenly, several letters began to jump up and down, hollering, Me! Me! No me! Letter Z, since you're the last letter in the alphabet, you'll take the last turn, said the letter S. As Zippy letter Z created his words, Mr. Grammar gave that familiar frown and thought, I wonder what was wrong with the sentences that the other letters created. Okay, letter O exclaimed, One, two, three, go! The chase was on. The letter Z ran after Patty for what seemed like an eternity. Everybody was going hog wild. As Patty Pearl Paper continued to run, she hollered, Holy cow! I should have worn my purple sneakers today. Just then, she tripped over spices and fell on that big, beautiful pink bow. Bam! The letter Z threw those words on Miss Patty faster than grease lightning. The new sentence read, I would like to bring some chocolate ice cream to the celebration. Nope, corrected the letter W. Wrongo, as he looked down his nose at the letter Z. Just then, Mr. Grammar yelled, Stop! I got it! I think I know what's wrong with all the sentences. Where is the capital letter I? Looking bewildered, the letters glanced back and forth at each other. Suddenly, the lowercase i started jumping up and down. Here we are, they squeaked. Nope, we need capital letter I, explained Mr. Grammar. I heard that some capital letter I's live on Bill Street next door to the eye doctor, whispered youthful letter Y. Hmm, maybe the capital I's got lost, chuckled the letter Z. Will somebody call the eye doctor to explain that we need some capital letter I's over here right away? Asked Mr. Grammar. We have a serious situation. The letter Y pulled out her phone and called the eye doctor. And just like that, I, 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 you could hear them chanting as they marched down the street, heading toward the Alpha House. The letter I's wore black top hats, white gloves, with an owl perched on their shoulder. Meanwhile, in the backyard, you see, Mr. Grammar began, when you use the letter I to refer to yourself, it's called a pronoun and must be capitalized. I, 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 interrupted the I's. Also, Mr. Grammar continued, when you use the letter I to form a contraction, you must capitalize it too. The eyes bellowed, I, I, I. Lastly, you must always capitalize the letter I when you use it at the beginning of a sentence, advised Mr. Grammar. I, 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 roared the capital letter I's. Just then, Mr. Grammar gathered up the three sentences and threw them all on Patty. Then, like clockwork, the capital letter I's moved into action. Excuse us, thank you, pardon us, move please, they exclaimed as they bumped the lowercase I's out of the way and took their rightful place. At last, the sentences were perfect. Letters U and V read the sentences, emphasizing the letter 
the capital letter I's. Please let my sister and I come to your house for a sleepover. Do you know what I'm going to bring to the party? I would like to bring some chocolate ice cream to the celebration. Mr. Grammer looked around the yard and began waving goodbye to the letters. The next day, as usual, Mr. Grammer and Spices walked past the Alpha House, but they knew a little secret this time. The capital letter I must be used correctly for sentences to make sense. From that day forward, whenever Mr. Grammer walked past the Alpha House, you could hear him mutter, I, I, I.